Welcome everybody to another episode of The Discarded Compass. I'm John Lynch, I'm your host again. And we've Hale Dwaskin with us uh, tonight. And Hale's going to talk about routes to enlightenment, how to reduce anxiety and unhappiness, and even search for bliss. Maybe you'll find that too. <laughs> <laughs> we Welcome, may indeed. <laughs> how well, are thank you? Thank you for having me. I'm good, I'm good. Good, good. Hale, the Sedona Method, could you give us a bit of an introduction about yourself and what led you on the spiritual search and the spiritual Oh, arena yes, absolutely. Uh, I, I've been on uh, this person, this personality has been on a, was on a search for since the early 70s. And I had done many different things. And then I met my first teacher or mentor, Lester Levinson, in 1976. And when I met him, uh, I was deeply moved by he, what he was a living embodiment of, uh, for lack of better words. Uh, and at the time, he had reduced his teachings to a do-it-yourself system from just him. Many teachers just kind of speak to you, uh, and there's not really a process they give. It's just a conversation. And that's how he taught uh, from when his he got his understanding in 1952 until the early 70s. And then he decided he wanted to take himself out of the equation. Uh, and so a do-it-yourself process that we now call the Sedona Method was created. And then I met him in 1976 and uh, to just met him. I was deeply moved by just something. I couldn't really put it into words, but I did notice that there's there was silence and love and peace that came to the forefront when I was with him. And I only met him once and decided to do the course. It was a two-waking course. And before the course was over, I realized this is what I was going to dedicate my life to. That was back in 1976. And um, it has evolved, uh, especially since the early 90s, Lester passed the copyrights to me. And it went uh, from just a, spirit, a spiritual tool and a tool for self-help uh, into something that has gotten more and more non-dual over the years. I, it's now the message on our advanced programs is very similar to some of the people you've interviewed who talk about there is no one, no path. This is just what's apparently happening. And that's it, basically. <laughs> and uh, and that's that was kind of the underpinnings from the very beginning. But what's been unusual about the Sedona Method is that it's it's kind of almost like a bridge technique. Uh, it takes you all the way up to the edge of what can be done with a technique or with information. And it's also a very powerful tool for uh, making the person's life happier, wealthier, more relaxed, more open, because it's based all around just recognizing what you are and what you aren't and letting go. And so it... I have gone through many radical transformations in the process of, of teaching and using this process, and it's evolved tremendously since the 90s. And that so, transformation from the original teachings to a non dual perspective, why and how did that happen? It's quite well, interesting. Uh, it, there was a non dual underpinning from the very beginning, but Lester was talking about this more the way that Ramana and Nisargadatta did. Uh, 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 it was based more on the languaging. He very much resonated, even though he got his understanding not through a teacher, it was spontaneous. Uh, he was sent home to die from a coronary uh, at age 42. And being a scientist, he realized that everything he knew wasn't it. And so we started a process of self-inquiry and one realization after the other happened and over a three month period, he went from a physical and emotional basket case into an uninterrupted 
uh, experience of non-duality that lasted another 42 years after the doctors had given him weeks to live. Uh, and so at first he couldn't hardly speak and uh, even couldn't even, he didn't even answer to the name Lester. People would say Lester and they, or, uh, and he didn't, didn't even answer to the name. And then he realized he, they were referring to him. And, but it's still for a while, we referred to himself in the third person. Lester did this and Lester did that. That lasted for a while. Um, but over time, he became more kind of engaged in the world. Uh, so it always had that non-dual underpinning. When I learned it, I was more interested in, in spirituality than I was in improving my life. I was only 22 years old. Didn't have much life to improve. <laughs> but I had been a seeker since a teenager. So uh, that's what I was interested in. And he talked about it in a dualistic way. He talked about it as going free, even though he didn't see a difference between him or anyone else. There was just that. Uh, and so in the 90s, he turned, he knew he was getting ready to leave the body, he turned his copyrights over to me. And he said, the way this process is now is going to evolve as you take charge of it and teach it. And when he turned the process over to me, there was just one way of letting go. And that's basically just deciding to drop it. Again, quite dualistic, but it very, very powerful if you knew how to do it, at least for the person. Of course, it didn't affect non-dual awareness or, or, or maybe not even non-dual awareness, non-personhood, non of course. But anyway, uh, and then over time, other tools evolved too, uh, something we call holistic releasing, where you, the nature of the illusion is that there are everything, as long as there's a person, there's this belief in right or wrong, good or bad, in and out, here and there. But uh, what I discovered as I work with people is if they embrace both, they dissolve each other and you're left with just nothingness or emptiness. And so that became something we call holistic releasing. And then also people live life on the surface of of the story of their experience they didn't never seem to go below the surface and so we developed a process called diving in where you just go deeper than whatever the mind is presenting and then again there's just that there's no separation and then uh and then the uh, uh let's see oh and i left one out oh well the, the uh, welcoming, uh, when you just really welcome what is as it is, which is what's natural, the that which is, if you could give it a characteristic, it would be welcoming. Uh, it's just is as it is, or it's what's apparently happening, which could be called welcoming, but it makes it sound more of a doing. It's not really a doing, it's just what's natural. So that's another way of letting go. And all that just happened spontaneously when for decades, the way this body mind teaches is I just show up and things unfold. I, I don't really have much planned. Uh, and even if I do, it doesn't go that way. <laughs> I don't know, know what I'm going to say before I say it. Uh, it's just what happens uh, or what apparently happens. And so and then it kept evolving, and then it became more, so we call it the fifth way, which is very similar to the way um, many of the contemporary non-dual teachers teach, not the radical ones, but the contemporary ones, and also Ramana, which was uh, using questions to just recognize non-duality, the, that there is no person and there is only what what is that's beyond the person and so we call that the fifth way and recently 
it, it's more evolved in some something we call the no way, <laughs> which no is way. which is no longer a process at all. There's not really a questioning. It's just a a discussion of what actually is and isn't, which is both actually things are and aren't at the same time. So, and all that just evolved kind of naturally and spontaneously through this body mind being in front of a room and talking to people. And, and we've always done it in the for, form of courses as opposed to, uh, or retreats, as opposed to songs or anything like that, because there's, there's no one here to claim any kind of achievement. And it seemed um, more in integrity to just treat it that way. Not that there's anything wrong with other way of doing it, but that's just what felt right. There's a lot in what you said. Um, there's a few things that sprang to mind. Uh, yes. It's like, how do you drop the dropper? I mean, how can you use the mind to drop the mind? And you, you mentioned you Ramana can't. as well, and he, he mentioned like, you know, it's like you use the thorn to pick out a thorn. Yes, um, yes. And the stick in the fire, to, you know, and things like that. Uh, you know, you stir the fire up with the stick and the stick gets burnt up. You know, these analogies and these, you know, wonderful nearly poetic ways of, uh, of describing things, but there is the paradoxical inquiry. I often think about where you, ha where you kind of mentioned it, you use both because the mind will always take a position. I find. Yes. Um, how do you circumvent that mind taking a position? You don't. You, uh, honestly, I think you can't because ultimately you and I don't exist. So if we don't exist, we're not really in control of any of this. It's just what's apparently happening or what's unfolding there. There's no locus or center that's in charge. There's just this natural unfolding it, 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 and that can appear as doing. So that but seems a bridge too far, you know, it is. So, so, but what, what, what we do is we talk to people where they're at. After a while, people start to realize that even if they had profound non-dual experiences, they're still experiences. There's an and, experience, or you mean? Yeah, well, th there, <laughs> the experiencer comes after. The, the, people will have tastes or glimpses of no person. And then the mind comes in and, and ascribes personhood to the experience, even though the, 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 there was no person. That was why there appeared to be these breakthroughs. And so there, there are ways that are maybe completely unnecessary, but seem to really help. And if at the very least, they certainly help um, the, the person be less clingy, less contracted, less uh, lost in their, their personal story. There are techniques that we use that help with that, that may or may not actually affect that that final dropping of of the mind which or the the sense of a personhood which is is not actually something that happens actually it's just what what is just is and there's recognition that there never was a person <laughs> it's like an aha <laughs> moment yeah yes except it's an aha for no one for no one yeah yeah. yeah. So what happens is this may change because at a certain point I may only teach, well, not really teach, but communicate uh, just in a descriptive way. But for whatever reason, uh, what I inherited from Lester was prescriptive. And so I developed the whole prescriptive way and refined it and refined it and refined it. And now it, it at least for the people who've been doing it for a while, that's dropping away too. But what we do is, is uh, I don't know if it's out of compassion or it's, it's a, a good thing or a bad thing. It's neither. It's just what's happening. I can still talk to someone wherever they're at. They can tell me a problem and I'll give them a technique 
that will first help them dissolve the contraction around the problem and then help them see that there, there is no problem and there's no one who has it. Depending on their openness and their willingness to go there. So what's the core uh, problem of a problem? Well, there isn't one. <laughs> That's a bridge too far as well, but we have to unpack it a bit. <laughs> there is an appearance of problem, as long as there's an appearance of of the one with a the problem. They're, they're, they're not really two. There's just what's happening. There's the person and its story. And then there's sub-stories about that we often refer to as problems, like how much money I have, or my relationships, or how I am with other people. Those are just sub-problems of something that's not even a problem, it's just this also spontaneous occurrence that happens very young, where there's this contraction that happens, and then there's an apparent person. But it's always been an apparent person. And so, you can deal with the apparent person in a, in a way that helps it, if for lack of a better word, way of describing it, helps the apparent person become more like Swiss cheese, uh, but at the same time, feel happier, peaceful, more blissful. All these things that a lot of spiritual past talks, talks about, a lot of people who use the Sedona method experience the exact same thing. I like to think years ago when it was just the progressive path. Uh, uh, we used to talk about how just a few moments of using the Sedona method it feels like you meditated for an hour. It was a sales pitch, but it was also accurate. And but e any of that is still within the story of me. Any technique is still part of the story. Yet that doesn't mean that they those techniques might not be appropriate from time to time. And so we we embrace both the person as it is and that which, which is beyond any sense of a person, which doesn't make sense to be able to have the both conversations at the same time, but somehow we manage. <laughs> don't really know how that happens, but it does. <laughs> Most people think it's either one way or the other. You're either on a progressive path until you've let go of enough or accomplished enough or seen enough or understood enough. And then based on all of the, either the merit accumulated or who knows what the story is, then you can reach a state of enlightenment. And the other perspective is there is already only that. And the person, as it appears, is just an illusion. And it's kind of weird to be able to talk about both with complete comfort, knowing that they're both stories. <laughs> you see that that rem that reminds me of of there there's there's no ultimately there's no experiencer, right? But how can there be experiences without an experiencer? I mean, we're not. That means we're not the presence. We're not any and then, thing. And the, that means we're, we're eternally not anything. Yes. Now well, that's, I don't mean really that in eternally a, but, because I don't mean, but, it, but, but I don't, I was going to finish. I don't mean that in a mental context. Yes. Like we have to discern what, what a mental context is. And I think what an ultimate position could be, if you know what I'm saying. Yes, but the, ultimately there is not even a position. That's the key, is that there's no subject or object. Both are an appearance. And time is an appearance. It, it's, it's, you use it, to, I mean, we are having a conversation apparently because we made an appointment a, a month ago or so, or thereabouts. I think it may have been less than that, I don't remember. But so that's going on at the same time, what's real, if you could use that word, is that the, the story of time is only part of the story. You can't actually find time, just like you can't find a me if you look for one. It's just not there. Yeah. 
I like the time thing is quite fascinating. Even I, I get captivated by the actual pretense of linear space. Like what you're going from one position to another, that means that you left point A an hour ago and you got to point B. Yes, and there's yes. a presupposition that point A is still there along right. a, a linear distance, but it, it isn't. It's like, <laughs> well, but also it's we're, we're, we're discussing the body moving. Yeah. You know, uh, Ramana and Nisikardata talk about the, the biggest recognition that's necessary is to recognize you're not the body. The body is subject to time. And that's, that's the ultimate fixation, isn't it, Hale? Yes. It, the body yes, identification. Yes. What, what can someone do about that? I mean, there's suffering and there's lots of things we can talk about, but ultimately, as you say, it's linked to that identification with yes. the body. Well, uh, well, ultimately nothing, but, but functionally you can just explore what, what is actually apparently here now. If, is there a, actually a here and a now if you're not referring to the body? You, you won't be able to find one because there isn't one. And you're also not going to find one because there isn't a you who can find anything, which is, which is totally, it doesn't make any sense at all to the mind at all. But what does the looking then? What, what does the knowing? I mean, uh, nothing. There isn't, again, I'm using words. And one of the things I say at least once, uh, on every time I present any part of the Sedona method, even if I'm just talking to an audience that just wants to hear about how they can have more money or better relationships or improve their health, is don't believe a word I say. Just be open to it and take it for checking and see if it bears out. And uh, so this is not about belief. It's not about uh, even about experience, although the, the technique part of the Sedona method is experiential. So again, it sounds contradictory. How could you talk about experiential when there's no experiencer? <laughs> it really makes no sense to the linear mind at all. But at the same time, there are things that appear to happen when someone really lets go things do seem to change in in their story, in their dream. But are they doing it? No, it's just what's apparently happening. So sometimes for some, letting go happens, and for others it doesn't. And for whatever reason, there's a lot more letting go around the Sedona method because that's at the whole intent or focus. But it, is it actually anyone letting go? No, it's just what's apparently happening. So usually what would be talked about or practiced would be let go to the to the present moment. We often hear of the power of now, Eckhart Tolle. Yes. The yes, moment, yes. keep it in the moment, momentary presence. You know, the Buddhist teachings are really, they drill down into that moment, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. I often think try not to keep it in the moment. Um, so... Yes, I've said that to people too. But, yeah, you know, but again, there's always a, a mental position it's, the mind will grasp for. I mean, yes. what I was going to say was... The it, mind can grasp now. It's something it can no. hold on, things well, it, it can, can hold on to. It's its ultimate but, position, isn't it? I mean... It's, it's even the now. The now is the closest the mind can get, but it can't really... The mind is where the apparent, the appearance meets that which is beyond. But even that is not accurate because there really isn't a now, except in relationship to a then. Just like there isn't a belief in relation, except in relationship to doubt. So the- Can I stop is, you there? When you said there's relation to now, there's always a relationship to a previous moment, maybe, right? Or, or that's quite fascinating. Future. That kind of, there was, there was a truth in that. Um, can you unpack that a bit? Well, us? it's, it's, it, 
time, if you're going to talk about time, even though it's part of just the, the, the story of me, even within the story of me, it's obvious that now there wouldn't be even a need to talk about now unless there was a then. So both are uh, as a po um, polarities on nothing. They're, they're not, neither is real. So there's something, my, my own inquiry is kind of saying to me, it's like we place importance onto, onto only one position, the prior yes, yes. or the present, yeah? But ultimately, yes, we, prior we and don't present, place in, prior, that, sorry. Prior, but ultimately prior and present don't hold right. any weight whatsoever. None. That's quite powerful there now, yeah, yeah, that's quite good. Yeah. Well, the, the, that which is apparently just is. And again, we're using words, so that's even too much. And, but at the same time, uh, we appear to live in a world with other people, with events. All of that appearance continues unchanged. What changes is the sense of a contraction around the sense of here and me and awareness. I'm aware. But none of that is actually real. It's, it's just what's appearing. And as you say, time is created by those. Time effectively has to have two points. The mind has to survive, it seems, on two points. A past yes. and a present, or a present and a future. or Yes. Or some sort of hinging. Uh, of, yes. It has to box yes. it up in, in some sort of contrast. Yes, but it, it's not even the mind. There is really no mind. There is just thinking. What is the mind? What is the, what, is it just thinking? Thinking. Thinking makes it so. What well, doesn't even make it so? It, <laughs> thinking doesn't actually do anything because <laughs> it's it's the language. It's language, and the language are, is concepts. Uh, uh, it's symbols representing concepts about that which never really was. That's why language falls short when you try to talk about what is. Yeah, and there's even, there's a massive clue in the search for people when just going by what you're just saying, people search for years and years and years. Yes. And I often think, well, if ultimate enlightenment was, so, if there was such a thing as ultimate enlightenment and an ultimate, fantastic, wonderful position to be found, first off, it would have been found a long time ago and that would be it. But anyway, um, it would be easily reachable because it would be so profound and so wonderful and so brilliant. Yes, but that's assuming that this, this that's, that is already, is not it. Yeah, yeah. And this that is already, is already wholeness. And freedom is streaming. It, you, yes. you talk about freedom. Free, freedom is is every is is it's a bit like talking about life you know the same life in a light bulb is the same life electricity is the same life in us it's, it's all powered by the same life force i think yes well but everything is that one energy energy that yeah. one again we're still using words so these are it's all we have yeah yeah th these are pointers but everything already is freedom or unconditional love or that one energy. And that includes the seeking and the end of seeking. That includes thoughts and the absence of thoughts. That includes emotion and the absence of emotion. 
that includes all the apparent contradictions and dualities of life. And it includes that just empty fullness that is beyond all contradiction. It includes everything. It's boundless. And what about attachments, even attachments to loved ones, you know, uh, they can be a heavy attachment on a spiritual search. What does one do about those? Well, you, there we teach lots of the techniques for letting go of attachments and aversions. But at the same time, we let people know that they don't have to let go of all their attachments and aversions for what it is to be as it is. What is What's apparently happening includes attachments and aversions. It's not, it's not just the saints and sages who are enlightenment. They're not enlightened, they are enlightenment. So, so is the, our politicians and generals and soldiers and criminals, not just saints and sages. And so is every apparent indiv individual, no matter what role they're playing. What's the quickest approach to enlightenment? <laughs> How can you approach what already is? <laughs> That's like you saying, what's the quickest approach to John? Uh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Yet at the same time, there is, there is apparently uh -huh. things that the, that the, the person can do. I, I, I'm friends with Francis Lucille. I've known him since the early 90s. And uh, uh, he used to say, say that all techniques are, uh, are uh, giving the mind something to do so it doesn't chew up your life. And it's like giving a dog a tennis ball to chew on so it doesn't chew up the furniture. Mm. And when he first said that, I didn't like it because I was still teaching purely, prog well, I had already started transitioning out of pure prog progressive path type teachings into more non-dual teachings, but I still didn't like it because they're, they're still, again, what I, the, the body of work that, that the Sedona method is, is called the Sedona method. Method certainly in, implies there's something to do. It strongly implies that, yeah. Strongly implies that. And so uh, I give people things to do. And at the same time, there's this knowingness that, that it, it only ha helps the apparent person. It doesn't affect what actually is. And, and it's, it only apparently helps. But the apparent help that people get can be very profound from the perspective of having a happier, peace, more peaceful, more loving, more open, more successful even story. But it's still just within the story. Are we talking about authenticity? I mean, it's not like everybody becomes a non-entity. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, you know, but... um. You, you know, well, we're not all going to end up like a non-entity. They already are that. Well, you know, life. They li there's yeah, a again, pro natural programming. I think that's there. And oh yes, the programming stays even after there's no one to who's taking delivery of it. Mm. A lot of it, the a lot of it does drop away by itself. One of the things that I noticed, even when it was purely a progressive path, is I'd be doing all this work on a on an apparent issue or program or belief. And I'd work and I'd work and I'd work at it and I'd feel it dissolving. And then I'd put it down for a while and then I'd be doing something else. And then all of a sudden, the whole thing would just unhook and disappear. And it was decades ago when, when there was this recognition that did I let that go 
or did it never really exist? So it, it, it doesn't really make sense to the mind. None of it does. It does even the most progressive path of, paths don't make sense to the mind. The mind thinks that, that its problems are real, it's, the person is real, you're real, I'm real, suffering is real, and the only way to deal with it is from the outside in. Well, it's a bit like, like when we're having, if we're having a nightmare. I mean, we can't decide that the nightmare isn't real. It's real because, and then we wake up, we go, God, I believe that nightmare again, mm -hmm. or that dream or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, in deep sleep, there's nobody there. Um, you know, the, the ego drop falls away for everybody. That's why we love deep sleep. I mean, yeah, we know that um, in the yes. spiritual circles, it's kind yes. of common knowledge, but you know, what I'm saying is, Really, there's nothing that can be done, is there? Uh, not re not about what actually is, no. Because, but not because you can't do anything about it. It's because there's no one to do anything about it. But it's a bit there's like a saying there's dreaming happening. Yes, it that's is it. exactly like saying there's dreaming happening, and there's night dreaming happening, and waking dreaming happening, and interruptions that we call sleep, deep sleep. Oh, yet, yet there's those interruptions happen during the day too. If, if everyone listening to this, a good part of the day that a parent person isn't there. And it's different, the, depending on the programming, it's different. Mm -hmm. Some people lose themselves in their work. Some people lose themselves in a sunset or in a piece of art or playing music, or singing, or dancing, or uh, watching, or even entertainment, watching a movie, listening, listening to music, not even playing it. That's ultimately we're seeking our, in everything we do, we're seeking happiness, but happiness is just the absence of an apparent separate individual. Is happiness the absence of suffering or, or does one need the other? Well, depending on how you define happiness, the way most people define happiness is just the po the gaps between suffering. That's how most people experience it. But there is an uncaused happiness that is happening for no one. Something I used to say is the less there's an enjoyer, the more there's an the more there is enjoyment, but that's not up to a person. That's just what I like, I like to happens. I like to split words up. Enjoyment would be like enjoymently, <laughs> you know. It's kind of a <laughs> yes. Um, it's uh, are there levels to this, or is it just? An aha moment, would you think? Well, I don't even know it, if it's an aha moment. It's it's just everything actually even right now is happening spontaneously. We only think it has, it's a series of events leading one to the other. And so we assume that on the path, it's a series of events, one leading to the other, or le leaning, yes, but also leading to the other. But is that actually what's happening? I, I, I'm not sure it is. I, at the same time, you know, the Buddhists and will talk about something called uh, enlightenment. They'd say that enlightenment, they speak about it as though it's an event, and they say enlightenment is an accident. And all any practice can do is make you more accident prone. I like that. But is that the truth? I don't know. It's a saying. I was thinking that before. I don't think of much to say before the actual interviews, but I, a lot that's coming up for me is like the, the, the discernment between grace and will. And is there a difference between the two ultimately anyway? Well, but neither is true. Hmm. Neither is true. Yeah. On one level, everything is grace. There is only that. And will can exist without 
someone to will. It can so exist without, without an ego, free will. Uh, it, there is no, there is n neither f free will nor predetermination. Both of those don't are irrelevant without the story of me. But that implies that with the story to me, there's predetermination, but there isn't, is what you're saying. Yeah. So there isn't. What do you mean? Well, within the story, <laughs> there can be, there is this belief that there's, you have to figure out whether it's free will or predetermined. That's what I'm but asking. Both are not real. It's, it, it, just imagine they're part of a story. <laughs> oh, so, I don't know, is this a comedy? Is this a comedy? Yes. Uh, podcast yes. or it, what is it sometimes? Yes, I but think it is. It certainly tickles <laughs> me, you know. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh at the mind's inadequacy, so mine anyway. Um. Well, everyone's. The, the, how can just a series of thoughts that aren't <laughs> even, don't even belong to you, actually control anything or figure anything out? They're just thoughts arising, <laughs> belonging, and feelings arising, belonging to no one. Feelings. I mean, people, there's a lot of feeling junkies out there. I mean, they're probably listening to this wondering, how do I disassociate myself from all these terrible feelings? And well, but, but again, there are certainly techniques you can do. We teach them. Come that, on, and tell, us, tell us one of your techniques, because you you're very slow on telling us some of your, some of your well, techniques. Uh, What's that? You're a bit slow on on, 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 on revealing some of your techniques. Give us well, one no, anyway. If you want me to do a technique, I'd be happy to do a technique. We've been just talking about stuff as opposed to... How about, I, how about suffering, Hale? Suffering. Yes. If you could drill down into suffering for us with, with a technique, I'd appreciate that. Well, it is, suffering is a general category that, that a technique really doesn't work for, except maybe... The only technique there could be, in this moment, can you actually find anyone who's suffering? And if you if you don't refer to a, a, the mind or the body, you can't. There is no one who's suffering. And even more than that, suffering is is only due to, to the belief that there is a sufferer. There certainly, there can be pain, there can be emotion, there can be thoughts, and there are, without anyone taking delivery of them. It's the taking delivery that creates the illusion of suffering. And what, what, what is that taking delivery? How does that happen? It, it's ju it's just a, a, the automatic functioning of uh, of that contraction called me. It's part of the story of me. But yet at the same time, you can do things like allow what is to be as it is. Now that's a technique. It's not the truth. But if if there is a feeling of suffering in this moment, if you simply welcome it or allow it it immediately starts to lessen or or you can just notice that it is welcomed it's not you allowing it it is welcomed <clears throat> it's very it's difficult just, it, to welcome suffering i mean you know and no it's actually the easiest thing to do really yeah so if someone cuts you up in a car and 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 you're driving your brand new Mercedes home from the the, the showroom. They wish and, and it gets a scratch or you have an accident. Yeah, yes. and a and a truck comes along and and tailgates you and rams you and next thing your your Mercedes is absolute right off. Yes, and you know he gets the trucker gets out and says, "Listen, you can't drive uh, whatsoever. You're 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 a ridiculous driver, and you should be off the road." And and and. And that's it. And I couldn't care about your Mercedes whatsoever. Um, you're going to well, be a bit. Well, things like that might you're, happen. You're, you're, you're going to be a bit. You're going to be suffering. And yes, to no, welcome that but is there really could, difficult. There could be a reaction. Yeah. Because 
every event contains reaction that we think that there's a separate event and then the reactions happen uh, because of the event. But what if the event includes the, all the reactions? What if that's all one event that's apparently happening? And again, there, there's no leverage point. There's no thing that's separate from that. It is all just one event. Actually, it all is, but any specific event is that way too. And so I, I don't say pretend it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. You, if you're, if you, there could be a feeling of anger or fear or mm -hmm. frustration, mm -hmm. but if it, the feeling is allowed or welcomed or just simply noticed in this moment, what, what tends to happen is it dissolves, it opens, it okay. relaxes. <clears throat> okay. But what usually happens, I, I would find is that the feeling is noticed. Like it is so much noticed because I can so much feel it that I'm angry. Right. I mean, it's, yes, it's, the way it's not like I don't have to, is, I, I don't have to try to feel it. it. Yes. I know that I'm angry. Yes. But that's the problem. What, what we think that two things, first off, at first it feels like I'm, I'm angry. And if you look well, at I'm that sentence, angry. no, but the feeling in the, in the English language at any rate is I'm angry is what most people say. Well, most, I am yeah. the anger. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's what's normally said, yeah. Yes, yes, and that's how it's experienced. So one thing you can do is just check. Are, are you actually anger? Or is there just simply beingness? If you look, the anger dissolves, and there is just beingness. That's what was there before. It's just a noticing of what is. Now, again, remember, I'm doing techniques here, mm. but they can be very helpful and they work. They are instantaneous. Another thing you can do is just simply notice, is that what's apparently happening? And in just in the noticing of that, something settles and opens inside for no one. And again, that's still a technique, but it's, it's it's just a pointer more than a technique can i can i ask as well i mean yeah that that's that that is quite interesting but the follow up to that i find would be then we want to identify with good feelings is that is that just as deceiving as identifying totally. with the angry feelings yes <clears throat> can you talk about yes. that a bit maybe well yes because <clears throat> if i'm feeling it if I either feel like I am it or I'm feeling it, that's still part of the story of the person. Mm. And so a, a lot of uh, teach, te teachings make heavy use of the carrot because e the absence of the person feels feels good when the person reappears. It feels good that they weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> and then they think it, then they associate it with some event or some technique or some whatever. Uh, and they think that I need to do whatever that was again. Well, then they go teaching and sitting on a podium, you know? Sometimes, yeah. yes, absolutely. Yeah. Ab absolutely. But, but all of that is also perfect. There is no right or wrong about any of this. There's just what, what's apparently happening. Most, most uh, people who take on any role in the spiritual circles are, are doing varying degrees of teaching. Some have, are less teachy, some are more teachy, and some just share a message and they don't actually teach. They're more, it's more of a descriptive description of what is. But to the, to the audience, they're still looking at them as a teacher, no matter how many times they say they're not. So it's, it's a, just it's, a a very, yeah. it's, 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 it's varying degrees and all of it's perfect. The, the, the apparent teacher and the apparent student, neither is real. It's just part of the appearance, the dance 
of this whatever's apparently unfolding or happening or appearing and and there's nothing wrong with that that is already wholeness is is there a, is there a certain karma that's involved in in someone reaching the spiritual path i mean here for one the spiritual path when i was younger what was something i used to dabble in the thing all right i used to inquire yeah i was kind of interested in things like that and the unknown and uh how things worked you know but i didn't think i'd end up on a spiritual search yes for years and years and years and going to gurus and such yes like what, what i'm trying to say is that was so far away from from what i thought um and of here course. i am hosting a podcast but I, but I if never, you look you know, at but I if, mean, if you look at if you look at just what you think moment to moment you yeah. think you're going to do something and we have thoughts they even could be thought i should do this and then it will either happen or it won't where there's really no con control re anywhere there's just what's apparently happening so what sometimes appear to be um causative and sometimes they don't and the people who believe that thoughts create think they need to manipulate their thoughts or control their thoughts to have a better life or to recognize truth but or they or the that, but that is all based on believing that there's someone in control of the thought. There's someone actually having the thought. What's the decider? But can you? Can anyone show you the thinker, or the decider, or the decider? Exactly. Why? Where is it? What it is isn't. It? But something decides. No. There's Things decisions are made. Happening. One what? decision. A decision is followed through. Well, some are and some aren't. So, and the ones that aren't are also decisions, by the way. Oh, yes, there's a, there there's apparently a decider, but it, that's only an appearance. Mm. I mean, even little things like preferring chocolate over vanilla. Is it really you preferring chocolate or vanilla, or did you grow up in an environment? Well, I decided that I don't like vanilla, and I decided I like chocolate, so... Yes, yes, but did you really do that, or did you just respond? This is this is all in the story, so it yeah, isn't yeah. any of this true. Yeah. But I'm just tearing this apart a little bit. Go on. Did you just uh, grow up with parents who either loved chocolate or hated them? If you if you happen to be the type of persona that tried to mimic your parents, then you they love chocolate. You love chocolate. Mm. If if you the type of persona that that appears to uh, rebel against authority, then you decided you like vanilla. But did any of that happen? Was, was any of that in your control? Most of that happens very young. No, it's just what apparently happens. Yeah. The control. For no one. It's a, it's, it's a bit of a bogeyman, isn't it? Like a, a boogeyman? A, a boogeyman, yeah. Like a, like a, an apparent me it's like a the me is some sort of an illusion um yes it's it's an illusion or a felt sense of contraction or it's a story there are way but it's but it isn't it just appears to be that's that's the trick like it, it, this appearance of the me like i mean what a tricky so and so of a thing that doesn't exist. I mean, it's a terrible affliction <laughs> that is that doesn't but, exist. But I mean, it's it really, the ultimate in this trap. Moment, are you, is, but Hale, it, it's is, the ultimate trap. It's the ultimate it, trap, isn't it? Wait, but pause for a second. <clears throat> in this moment, yeah. And even though there is no moment, but we're using language. Is there actually a, an ego you can find if you if you really look? No, but. If you, if you look, what is, what actually is? Now, when I say no, I can't be sure about the knowing, the, the saying no. There's a certain, I can't be sure yes, in reply no. Doubt. There's like, a, when absolutely. I say no to you, it's like, it's like I feel like I'm lying when I say no. 
Well, because well, you, know? you can remember the belief in it, but I'm talking about direct experience. Look, at, instead of thinking about it, in this moment, just look at direct experience. Now, again, there, even that is, is cheating. We're doing a technique, mm. but it's still helpful to, to know one actually. But, but let's put that aside for now. Just look at your direct experience or just look at direct experience. There may be sensations, pictures and sounds. There may be thoughts and memories. But are they actually hooked to anything? Do they, is there actually anyone who owns any of that? If there's anything to be said, it would be the feeling of the body, right? Right, but even that. But that's interesting because the feeling of the body, I mean, if I'm sure I'm the body, what am I looking for? <laughs> right. You know, no problem like, then. Just go about your life as a body. <laughs> yeah, but like if if I'm ultimately the body, what's the problem? There's nothing to do because I found the fact that I'm the body and that's the end of it. That's the end of that's Right. It. If that was true, it would be. Yeah. If that was if that was a safe, satisfying position, yeah. the the world would be a very different place. Yeah, I mean it's, it's I think Miss Agadata said that. I mean it, it's it's uh, something like paradoxical that everybody's looking for enlightenment yet they're believing they're the body. I mean something like that. Right, like, right. Some sort I don't of, remember his, that. I know so, what you're referring to. Yes. You know, it's Again, uh, he he thought the 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 most re important recognition was the and so did Ramana. I mean even when Ramana describing his own process he talked about how he let the body die and recognized he wasn't it. Wow. Uh, and it all happened in 20 minutes. So the, but you're, you're thinking about it again. Mm -hmm. Just pause for a second. Oh, I was thinking about Ramana there actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a fun thing to think about. I always smile when I think of Ramana and Nisargadatta. Same. Yeah. There's something. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in this moment, what is what what is appearing what is actually appearing don't know right and does that belong to anyone is that owned by anyone a response the response isn't any anything meaningful right but uh, so when you when you focus on this what happens is the mind really can't process it no so it it takes a temporary vacation and maybe uh, that what i've seen happen for people doing that is all sorts of tendencies and desires and problems seem to fall away just from that at the same time, and it may or may not make, make it easier for that final dropping away. Probably not, but who knows. But, it, but it, what it does do is within the experience of a person, it changes the whole nature of that experience. And uh, at the same time, that even that is part of the story of me. It's not actually happening, it's just what's apparently happening. But after you, you, you pause like that, the mind doesn't even care about that. It's just, <laughs> okay, <laughs> doesn't necessarily understand it but it doesn't need to. Like just for a split second there, there was just head phoning happening. Which you right, exactly. Which is exactly. quite astounding. Yes. Because usually exactly. there's linking in the body and well, I, I you know, I can sit down and it, I can sit down myself. It's fine, I, I love it. Um, but it was quite, there was just an awareness of the headphones, nothing else. Uh, nothing else, you know? exactly, exactly. And that's always yeah. what's happening. And it hides 
in the story that we're making where the the way the body mind is or or the the appearance of the person is wired is there's a constant narration there's a constant mm -hmm. putting it into context yeah and that that can fall away in in pieces but eventually it just stops and and maybe the falling away in pieces is related to the it just stopping or maybe not but either way it's fun to have the fall away in pieces and 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 it, and it's important to say i just want to say that it's important to say that this is serious too because it, you know it apparently can be because when you're talking about the mind and the closer we get to the mind dropping away it can get very subtle and it can be cunning baffling and powerful you know in some respects that subtlety yes. of it but when it's in full flow i i used to have it when i was really young the racing mind when there was full identification there would be racing mind constantly and it, it could not be turned off so it can be a real apparent real thing in a, in a way for, for yes. people yes yes but isn't that suffering. in this isn't that just a story yeah but it it shows how how it is a story actually when it is in full flight and you've got a racing mind it it does really show that it is really a story not but just a subtlety moment, it, to be navigated Yes, but it, in this moment, is it, again, I keep saying in this moment, it's just a habit. Mm. There is no moment. But if you look, even after everything you just said, is any of that real? No, but it, it and, can, and apparently yes, there, there can be, there's probably people listening to this that have a racing mind and they understand what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm not denying that my, my, my racing minds happen. Mm. But check, is it happening for someone? Even that memory of the past, does it actually belong to anyone? <laughs> there seems to be a preference for unconditional love for love when it comes to non-duality and i it's like i shouldn't say that no there's no should or should about any of this yeah i mean you know as far as i see that energy that life force f here anyway and and it's strong is that it's potentiality eternally potentiality yes but let that story drop away for a moment and just notice that even the headphones are that unconditional love the bookcase is unconditional love bookcasing that body is unconditional love bodying. And it's effortless and it's like, yes, a potential absolutely. That's it's for ultimate freedom appearing Alre already. Already. Yeah. It's quite, it's quite something, you know, uh, already is that yes. And people look for freedom and it's as soon as they go looking for freedom they're jailing themselves aren't they you know well context. not really but yeah that's what appears to happen they they appear to be in a jail the only thing they haven't noticed is there's only two walls two walls yeah me and mine me and mine okay. the the, uh, the, uh, the other rest <laughs> the rest of the jail has no walls and do they know they're in jail that's the thing well, they imagine they are. Mm. Yeah. It's it's the most fascinating thing uh, to talk about, isn't it? It's the most, yeah, I it's think fun. it's the ultimate thing to, to inquire, to talk about. It's, it's fun. Yeah. But it's not, yeah. it's not serious. But one of the things that I noticed over the years of talking about this, the, 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 the more, the less there's this sense of a person 
and the more there's this, and it, it sounds very dualistic, but I'm going to say it anyway, the more there's just laughter, sp spontaneous laughter for no reason. Why is that? Do you... I don't know. Just what is. I was going to call you Lister there for a minute. <clears throat> um, <laughs> um, Hale, it's been quite interesting talking to you. Um, and it's a different perspective. I, I wasn't so uh, aware of the fact that that your your Sedona method is kind of going into the non-dual arena. You know, yes. it's quite interesting. Yes. That is, yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of it's a very weird thing that they, if someone comes to me and they just want to make more money, I'll give them techniques to make more money, and at the while letting them know that there's more to this, there's more to the whole thing than just making more money, and when they're ready for that, the conversation expands hmm. naturally, it's effortlessly. And do you hold retreats and, and uh, yes, yes, and we, online we hold around? retreats right now four times a year. Uh, and then we have shorter um, um, online programs. Uh, we're we're going to be going back to live events in the fall. Uh, for the past couple of years, it's all been Zoom and phone. Uh, and then we have numerous audio programs. Um, some are more non-dual and some are are again you, you've you've probably heard that there's there's always this tension between the direct path and the progressive path and now there's also a, a tension between no path the direct path mm -hmm. and progressive path there's gonna be but tension. with the sedona method there's there's an exploration of all three oh. without any without any conflict <laughs> without you, fighting well, well done you <laughs> What's that? Well done, you. I said, if you if you can negotiate well, I, the three of those again, if I was doing this, it wouldn't be happening. Okay. <laughs> the, this even when I was even when this body mind was just teaching the progressive path, the only way I could teach it is for Hale to disappear, for speaking to happen. There was just speaking happening, and it came out in that particular way. That's been going on for decades. So, it, it, I, I guess I'm just weird. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't, don't be hard on yourself. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think that's a bad thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> what? <laughs> Join the club. Um. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe yeah. maybe people on the path are the sanest people that you could meet. You don't know, do you? I mean, you know. Yeah, they could be the least or the most, and it doesn't really matter. Crazy's normal. Normal's crazy. I mean, how do you look at these things, you know? I don't. I don't worry about it. I mean, there are certainly, <laughs> yeah, well, there are certainly leaders in the world that people would call normal that are quite abnormal. Yes, and vice versa. People mm. who would be considered normal or quite abnormal, and it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Again, within the, there's there's always contradiction within the story. But the love to be, I have to, I have to touch on that. But the love to be is so strong. The the love to be is so strong, and there's nothing can yes. be done about that. Yeah, and the, the, nothing needs to be done about mm. that. Yeah. There is just that that yeah. unconditional love that all is. Yeah, it's quite fascinating that that, that life force just wants to be and to, it's the only way it can know itself in this body. Well, but, it? but again, I don't think it wants anything that's personifying it. That's saying mm. it has a, has a me. I don't think it really does. It doesn't want anything. Want is purely within the story of me. Mm. And that's okay. Want isn't bad. A lot of a lot of uh, people who are working towards the progressive realization think they have to get rid of all wants because they heard that freedom is desireless. Yeah. yeah. So they think I need to become desireless, and it doesn't work. Well, it certainly didn't happen here. I mean, 
life took a different direction here. It was like no, life a, takes <laughs> quite, life quite just creative, unfolds as it does. Creative yes. sphere, which was quite surprising. You know, it wasn't yes. sitting sitting down for well, it was certain sitting down for years, but it took off in a totally different direction altogether. Um, yes, you know, I yeah. Look, if if somebody wants to get in touch with you. Hey, how do they get in touch? And, and, and well, the, the, the simplest thing is just go to our website, which is Sedona.com. That's S-E-D-O-N-A.com. Yeah. And that website is more designed around talking to people interested in the progressive path. The other thing is I have a podcast called Letting Go and the Greatest Secret. Uh, so it's available wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, and I, I've interviewed now... Uh, I lost track, but it's, oh, uh, it's 60 plus people, uh, from, and I have the interesting conversations with people who are just not even on the progressive path, they're in self-help or, 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 um, or like therapy and things like that, all the way to people who are talking about sharing this uncompromising message that they're, uh, there is no one and no path and everything in between. And it's been really a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed it. And uh, so, uh, so there's a lot of really fun conversations to listen to. And then we have a, 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 a Facebook group called the Sedona method and a YouTube channel where the, where we have hundreds of free videos, including videos of all the podcasts. Great. And have you got some books? I think there's a book you've written as well. Oh, yes. Two, two books. Uh, Happy, Happiness is Free and It's Easier Than You Think, which I co-authored with my mentor, Wester Levinson. I like the uh, title, yeah. yeah. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. And then The Sedona Method, which is the the technique part of, of the process that's been around for a while. Hail Baskin, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Oh, thank you. And it's been fun and enlightening. And uh, there are a few moments of 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 uh, of undescribable something's happening, properly, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and some laughter too. Uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, hopefully you come on again to the show again sure. maybe sometime, you know? Oh, sure. <laughs> And they can reach you at www.sedona.com. Am I right? Yes, that's right. Just yeah. like the city in Arizona. Just like the city in that, yeah. That's yeah, how it's spelled. That's, that's a place I love to go to someday. You never know. Yes. You never know. If, if, if the ducks line up, you know. Yes. Those ducks. <laughs> them ducks, just to get them ducks lining up is the thing. I've tried all my life and just yeah, when you yeah. have them all lined up, have, one have ever, goes. Have you yeah. ever been around ducks? They don't really like they to line like up. They don't like lining up. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have to waddle on over here anyway. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Thanks again and uh, take care. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You too.